The problem that I have with and we have with Mika is that instead of making the system more secure, it's actually creating an incredible deep systemic risk. The Japanese yen is not really healthy. They're trying everything that they can to protect it, but at some point might unfold. What are the reasons behind the recent turmoil in global markets? Is Donald Trump's plan to create a strategic Bitcoin reserve a feasible idea? And is regulation threatening Tether's operations in Europe? We discuss this and more questions in our latest chat with Tether CEO Paolo Arduino. This is an interview you don't want to miss. Uh, something you said in the latest interview, I found it interesting. You said that essentially the success of Tether corresponds to the failure um, of the current financial system. In order for Tether to succeed, the system needs to crash. Can you comment on that specifically? Yeah, I, I would phrase it in, I think I phrase it in a slightly different way. Um, maybe the underlying mechanic is the same, but is um, the success of uh, USDT is the symptom of the success uh, of many um, national economies. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's not because of our fault. I think that, uh, thank God, there is USDT, because as I said before, USDT is helping hundreds of millions of people to opt out from those systems that are failing. So those systems are failing because they were countries, governments, uh, central banks have printed out of thin air for such a long time, too much. You see what is happening in Japan, you know, the, the Japanese... Um, stock market uh, has been crashing the currency the japanese yen is not really healthy they're trying everything that they can to protect it but at some point might unfold many countries and many governments and central banks are failing in their job so in the end the you know that's the thing that is kind of sad right so of course you know uh companies have to make money but um you wish maybe to make a little bit less money and uh, see more um, intelligence uh, among people running central banks, um, protecting uh, the people in their countries. Talking about uh, regulation. So we saw that not long ago, uh, the uh, European uh, MICA regulation entered into force. It uh, imposes certain limits in the operations of stable coins on the territory of the European Union. Tether has not yet fully complied with this regulation. A few exchanges have uh, delisted uh, Tether because of uh, these uh, difficulties. Can you address this specific issue? Yeah, so first of all, um, there, there is a little bit of misconception. I think USDT is still available on OKX and uh, Binance and so on. The problem with the limits imposed by Mika is that there are two types of limits. There is the limits that are reducing the, let's say, or making the stable coin uh, volume and issuance um, limited. So it means that there are like limits on the circulation and so on. Don't, we don't have any issues with those. Those are the type of limits that makes the system more secure. But then there are other types of limits. So limits to the reserves. And you would think, oh, well, the limits to the reserves should make the stable coin safer. Actually, my problem and our problem at Tether, we are the first ones that raised the problem, you know, when everyone else was very, very shy, is that the limits are um, requesting that a stable, as a, for a stable coin like USDT, 60% of the reserves um, should be kept in cash deposits into a bank. Why that is a problem? is because uh, cash deposits are non-insured. I'm insured above 100,000 euros in Europe. If you're a stable coin and you have 10 billion euros under management and you are only insured after to up to 100,000 euros, that is a big problem. Because you will see what happens during with Silicon Valley Bank and our main competitor in 2023. They had 3.3 billion in cash deposits in Silicon Valley Bank. Silicon Valley Bank went badly up. We all know about that. And our main competitor almost uh, died. So I think we have a very, very recent example why that is a bad idea. 
the bank goes bankrupt because it cannot meet your redemption request because that is, you know, it's a bank run in all facts. And you go belly up as a stable coin. So you, you fail, you go bankrupt as well because you were relying on a bank that was doing fractional reserve. So the problem that I have with, and we have with Mika is that instead of making the system more secure, is actually creating an incredible big systemic risk, not only for stable coins, but also for the underlying banking system. Now I understand your position on, on, on Mika. And so how do you think the situation will evolve in Europe? Do you expect to continue operating as usual in Europe as you, as you always been? So first of all, I think it's important for us to maintain open uh, discussions with the European regulator to try to address these concerns. Also our main competitor today, well, in the recent couple of weeks has expressed similar concerns. So now is multiple companies are expressing the same concerns. And now I just wanted to uh, ask you what you think about one of the biggest promises that were made by Donald Trump. So he said that if he wins, he will create a strategic reserve for the US made of, uh, of Bitcoin. A lot of people are excited about it because such, uh, such a move would uh, probably mean a huge increase in the price of Bitcoin. Uh, an increase in the legitimacy of Bitcoin. First of all, do you believe that such a move is possible uh, or are you skeptical? And uh, what do you think would be that the impact of, of such a move for, for Bitcoin and, and Tether as well? I think it would be in general a good idea if that would happen. We are seeing how central banks, especially in Asia, are acquiring more and more gold uh, in the least recent um, months. Uh, Bitcoin is far superior uh, than gold has, is a bit less understood. Gold had 7,000 years of, uh, of the first mover advantage in the minds of people as the perfect store of value. But uh, Bitcoin is actually superior than, than gold. So with gold, so with, with um, if uh, the US wanted to actually start accruing the best asset as part of uh, its national reserves, um, that would be Bitcoin. And starting with um, you know a purchase or continuous purchase of uh, of, of of Bitcoin um, without selling it, as as was uh, said during during the speech, that definitely you know it, it's not about our bags as we like to call them in the crypto industry. It's about that would be a very intelligent move from a country, and many other countries will follow. The beauty of Bitcoin is that it's the only currency that is purely governed by mouth. So it's not about trusting humans, it's about math. And so math is the only objective thing that we have in this universe. And so having a country that will use um, currency backed by math is, uh, and such a country such, so powerful uh, like the US is gonna be a huge signal um, to the rest of the world. So uh, I would be very bullish for that. And when it comes to Tether, I don't know, when it, it's, uh, we hold as well our uh, part of uh, our own reserves as, as a company, we hold them, we turn part of our profits in Bitcoin as well. So that would be a validation that our strategy was correct all along. All right, Paolo. So I think that was a very interesting conversation as usual. Looking forward to talk to, talk to you again. With great pleasure, Giovanni.